Well, it's things like um, music, videos, photos, pictures, uh, written materials, really all the sort of things that one would want to use in a, in a video made in the classroom. And if this material has been created by a third party, then typically you'll need a license in order to use it in a, in a video made in the classroom. Um, I say typically because uh, there are some exceptions um, that cover educational institutions such as schools, but those exceptions are really quite narrow, so it's dangerous to assume that just because you're doing something in the context of a school uh, that it's somehow covered by a general school's exception to copyright infringement. There's also so an exception that covers very old works, um, but typically uh, copyright only expires 70 years after the person who created it died. So a work needs to be really quite old indeed before um, copyright will have expired in it. So the general rule is that if a, th a third party created the work, then you'll need a, a license in respect of it. The school might have, um, will usually have, a, a general license that covers use of music um, but it's worth checking before you use music to make sure that what you intend to do with it is covered by your school's general licences. Um, that probably wouldn't be allowed under a, under a license held by, a general license held by the school. So if you want to do that sort of thing, then you'd have to go to the um, uh, the owner of copyright or somebody who represents them and explain what you want to do and then get a license that, that covers it. The rules surrounding collecting societies and the use of music are so sort of complicated and specific that it um, is probably beyond the scope of the, of the video because teachers wouldn't get into that. All the, from the teacher's point of view, all they need to know is if it's music, they need to check the licence and then they need to go through the, the central school um, administrators who would check with the collecting society. So it's really, I think the message for teachers is just if it's music, it's probably covered by the general licence, but check what, the, what you're proposing to do is covered by the licence. Um, well, it's a, a trap that schools sometimes fall into, which is that just because something is readily easy to copy, um, typically from the internet, and import into a video made in the classroom, that that, that ease means that there is some um, uh, that the copyright owner has in some way waived their their copyright, and of course that's not the case. Um, and just because a teacher might do that innocently, believing that, uh, that copyright has been waived because it is so, so easily publicly available on the internet. Um, uh, again, doesn't stop it being copyright infringement. Innocence is, is no defence when it uh, comes to copyright infringement. Well, just as the internet has made it easier for schools to infringe copyright, uh, the internet has also made it easier for copyright owners to find out about that infringement and some large uh, organisations actively go looking for that type of infringement on the, on the internet. So um, it, it doesn't make it any more infringement if you put it on the internet but it does make it more likely that someone's going to find out about it. Typically these sort of cases involving schools uh, don't go to court. If it's fairly clear cut, then um, the, uh, the, the, the copyright owner would write to the school saying, you've infringed my copyright in this way. And the school often ends up paying compensation to the copyright owner, so hundreds, thousands of pounds. And obviously that's frustrating because that's money that could be far better spent in the classroom. Um, so best avoided. Um, the other thing is that it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing for the school um, to get done for copyright infringement, particularly embarrassing for the teacher involved. So the best things to do are to make sure, if it's music we're talking about, to make sure that you've checked that the school's general license covers what you want to do. Um, 
and for other stuff to not make the assumption that just because something's on the internet that it's free to pinch and put into a, a video. Uh, and if you're in any doubt, then take advice or um, contact the copyright owner and ask them. Don't forget to watch the rest of this series to learn more about creating videos for you and your class.